Hemoglobin A1c as a measure of diabetes control. This video is for information only. Any discussion about HB, A1c and glucose control should be taken to your healthcare provider. Do not take medications and change treatment without medical supervision. Endodiabetes Limited will not take any responsibility for damage or injury resulting in watching this video. Hemoglobin A1c or HbA1c for short, is a measure of long-term glucose control in people with diabetes mellitus. In this video, we will discuss how hemoglobin becomes glycated, in other words, how HbA1c is made. We will also see what HbA1c should be according to various guidelines. Before we start, let us clarify some terminology. Hemoglobin is a protein in red blood cells. It carries oxygen around the body. Glucose is the principal sugar in the body. In other words, both glucose and hemoglobin are in blood vessels. Some of the glucose molecules will attach themselves to hemoglobin in proportion to the glucose blood level. So to speak, the higher the glucose, the higher the HbA1c. As red blood cells live for three months, HbA1c is a reliable guide to glucose control. In people who have altered hemoglobin molecule, for example, due to spherocytosis, sickle cell disease, etc., HbA1c is not a reliable guide to glucose control. Fructosamine, a plasma protein, is used instead. So, what should HbA1c be and what are the HbA1c targets? People with diabetes and higher HbA1c are more likely to develop complications, including eye and kidney problems, heart attacks, etc., most guiding bodies would recommend setting the individual target to HbA1c for people with diabetes between 6.5% and 7.5%. Guiding bodies now make some allowance for age, general welfare, etc. So in some individuals it is considered appropriate to allow the target HbA1c level to be above 7.5%. Finally, how does HbA1c translate into average glucose over a day? Before we go through the table and some of the values, it is worth saying that there are two measuring systems for both HbA1c and glucose. In the first two columns, HbA1c is given as a percentage of hemoglobin, and glucose is measured as milligrams per deciliter. These methods are in use in the US, for example. On the right side of the table, HbA1c is given as millimoles per mole, according to the recent IFCC recommendation and glucose as a millimole per litre, which is in SI units. An HbA1c of 5%, which is 31 millimoles per mole, is normal unless a person has altered haemoglobin molecule. This equates to a mean blood glucose of 96.4 milligrams per deciliter, or 5.4 millimoles per litre. In a person with an HbA1c of 7%, which in most cases represents good control, mean daily glucose is substantially higher, 154.2 mg per deciliter or 8.6 millimoles per litre. An HbA1c of 10% reflects glucose control that needs to be improved. This equates to the mean daily glucose of 240.8 mg per deciliter or 13.4 millimoles per litre. The method used to produce these figures has its critics, as the margin of error is higher than one would ideally like, but it gives some insight into what HbA1c means in terms of mean daily glucose. This video was brought to you by Endodiabetes Limited. All rights reserved.